Good morning, Adam. Good morning, James. How are you, my friend? I am doing very, very well. I'll tell you what, looking forward to a championship Saturday. Of course, our Crimson Tide uh, will be hitting the airwaves here on Tide 102.9 tomorrow for that 3 p.m. kickoff central time uh, in Atlanta. And, of course, around here, uh, the Crimson Tide rolling on along uh, with that. We'll just call it a dynasty of sorts as far as uh, five national championships in nine seasons under uh, Nick Saban. First off uh, to tomorrow, Bama and Georgia once again for the second time this calendar year in Atlanta, Adam. Uh, just kind of your preview to what to expect for tomorrow. Yeah, I think this will be the, the best test you know, of the season, uh, and that's what you want in this type of uh, type of game when you have what's at stake for both of these teams. I'm not sure uh, how much stake I put into it for Alabama, assuming that they don't get just blown out tomorrow, which I really don't see happening. Uh, I, I feel like Alabama's probably sitting in a, in a, I don't think Nick Saban would call it a comfortable position, but I think in the eyes of the committee and a lot of other people at large, I think we all view Alabama as a locked, locked playoff team as long as they don't get, get just boat raced tomorrow. I, I think the quality of their performance all year long uh, relative to the competition that they've had, uh, I, it's hard not, it, you know, I heard Jerry Danielson say during the Iron Bowl, it's hard for me not to look at this team and, and just think that they're not one of the four teams, well, one of the four best teams in the country. They just are. So uh, I think Alabama might be, might be in great shape regardless. I think Georgia's got a ton to play for. I think if they lose, they're out uh, of the playoff mix uh, and, and they'll end up playing in the Sugar Bowl because uh, I, I feel like the two, that two loss thing, we've never seen a two loss team make it yet. I feel like this is not going to be a year where we see a two-loss team make it. So uh, I think Georgia is going to be game-planned and ready. We saw what they did a year ago, how close that thing was, how it came down to the wire in that very same building. I have high expectations for a very good, high-quality matchup tomorrow. And I think this is going to be close. I think Georgia is going to give Alabama the toughest game that they've had this year. That doesn't mean Alabama still doesn't uh, end up winning by maybe two touchdowns. But I think for the most part of this game, this is going to be a close game. So do you think this can be a four four quarter game then? I think so. I I, I think Georgia has the ability to uh, dictate tempo uh, at on the offensive end. I think they have an efficient offense. It's not as explosive in the run game as it was a year ago, but they still have big big time names. You know, Hardman sticks out, Holyfield. These are all guys that have big game experience from a season ago, and they're now in feature roles. Uh, they can they can dictate tempo. Uh, I've been impressed by their offensive efficiency. I think Nick Saban said the same the other day. Uh, I think this will be Alabama's toughest task. I still think Alabama wins it, but I think it's a close game for, for four quarters. I mean, you're talking about, once again, uh, Kirby Smart, for, as we mentioned, for the second time this calendar year going up against uh, the old teacher when it comes to Nick Saban. How similar, not just from a football on the field standpoint, but program-wise, do you see – uh, what Kirby Smart has just built in this short amount of time as far as his Georgia program compared to what Alabama has under Nick Saban program-wise? Yeah, I, I still think it's in its infancy with this footprint on it with with Kirby Smart just recently taking over. So obviously we have some ways to go before we evaluate it fully, but I think the start of it, what we've seen so far, is very much in the mold of what Nick Saban does. Uh, I think the, the quality of talent continues to remain high. I'm not surprised by that. Kirby Smart was an excellent defensive recruiter, especially in his time at Alabama, so I'm not shocked that Georgia has one of the top 10 defenses in the country uh, with the quarterback play and, and how much balance is emphasized in this offense with with Georgia. I, I'm, I've been impressed. I think this is very similar, uh, at least in terms of the blueprint, to what Nick Saban has done, and who better than to follow the blueprint than somebody like Kirby Smart who had such great experience under Nick Saban. Uh, you know, it's been a storybook season for Tua Tonga-Vailoa. That really began that January night uh, in Atlanta, as you know. Uh, do you think Tua already has the Heisman wrapped up? You know what? I would have said yes up until about a week and a half ago, and I'm sure I'm a, I'm a victim of recency bias like, uh, like everybody else is. But I, I do feel like Kyler Murray has, has really made a lot of gains in that department. I think for, for the better part of the season, just about everybody with uh, a working set of eyes had two as the penciled in Heisman Trophy winner. I still think he wins it. Uh, and if I had to take a vote, I still feel like his 
kind of surgical efficiency over the course of the year, as I've been terming it. I, I feel like that's, that's something you really do have to appreciate in today's college football with, with as many throws, with the volume of offense now, to have the type of season that Tua has had that efficient where he's not even playing in some of the fourth quarters. You know, his, his stats aren't going to be padded as highly as somebody like Kyler Murray, who's going to have a lot of possessions offensively, but it's not going to be the most efficient night. And he's got to be forced into a lot of different situations offensively because his defense has been really struggling this year. So I'm sure the numbers would probably point towards Tyler making it a lot closer. I think it is pretty close, but I still think Tua will, will eventually walk away with the high school. We're talking with Adam Amin, play-by-play broadcaster for ESPN here on the Gary Harris Show. You mentioned Kyler Murray, and uh, for Tua, for Kyler, certainly valuable pieces to their teams. If you had to say who's more valuable between Tua and Kyler Murray as far as for Alabama and Oklahoma, respectively, who would you give that nod you know, to? Today, uh, I was going to say, James, sorry about that. It's an interesting question that you bring up because we were just talking about this the other day. And... I actually think that if, if if it were an MVP vote, I think Kyler Murray is the most valuable player to his team among among those two. Because we know what, what I mean, listen, Jalen Hurts is still a high-quality backup quarterback. If something were to have happened to Tua at uh, some point this season that completely took him out of contention, would, would any of us really be that worried that all of a sudden Alabama wasn't going to be in a position to win a game each week? I don't think I certainly wasn't worried about that because I just still feel like, you know, you, you've got a quality option in Jalen Hurts, and, and he's proven that in his limited duties this year, and obviously we know his pedigree. Uh, I think if Tyler Murray's not the Oklahoma quarterback, this is a much, much worse Oklahoma team because his explosiveness, he's probably the most dynamic player. I don't think he's as, uh, I don't think he's as efficient as Tua, and – I think two is probably still the, I would say, the most complete of the two quarterbacks. But Kyler Murray is a different type of athlete, and he's a dynamic playmaker. I know two is great. You know, we, we saw him run in the open field despite the knee issue. I'm, I'm not worried about two's athleticism. He's great. But Kyler is on a different level in that particular offense. I think if you remove him from Oklahoma, this is a, a, a three or four loss Oklahoma team. And I want to stick with Oklahoma here, Adam, because I mean, we see in sports when you follow a legend or when you follow someone that's been very successful, it's sometimes very hard to fill those shoes and keep that success going. But I mean, you look at and it's I think maybe even getting underappreciated a little bit as far as what Lincoln Riley's been doing with that Oklahoma football program because they have I mean, let's face it, they have a chance to play their way in to that number four spot tomorrow. Uh, in the Jerry world, as far as a rematch against the Texas Longhorns, just uh, wh- what do you think of uh, the job that Lincoln Riley has been doing? I'm not shocked. I mean, we knew what type of high-quality coach he was when he was at East Carolina. I mean, the, the offense that he was running, you knew he was a sound, savvy offensive mind. I'm not shocked that he got hired as young as he did as Bob Stoops OC. And uh, to step into the shadow left by... But as you said, I think, and I think accurately so, uh, James is, is a legend. I'm I'm very impressed, and the level of consistency that we've we've seen it has not wavered since Bob Stoops left, and it, this has been as about uh, a seamless of a transition as I think any coaching job has had in college football over the course of the last five or ten years. So to have that to really expand on the heights that Bob Stoops took Oklahoma to. And to do it in in a fashion that, I mean, listen, I, I know they're a, a top six team, and I know they're in position, like you said, to make the playoff potentially, but I, I'm with you. I still feel like a, peop, like a lot of people just don't talk about Oklahoma. They kind of fly under the radar, and I really appreciate that about how Lincoln Riley runs his program. He's, he's focused on game planning. He's focused on his team and, and not about the peripheral noise. And I, I really do feel like that's a high-quality uh, great to have a head coach, and especially a successful one, and he's turning into a very, very successful one. So first off, uh, you think they get into the playoff? I I, I think it's dependent on it, – it, all of this is dependent on Alabama Georgia and how that game, A, goes, what's the result, and B, how did it get there and how did it look in the process. If Alabama wins and Oklahoma wins, they're both in. 
I think Oklahoma should get it over Ohio State. Uh, I think their their resume late the year has been equal to that of what Ohio State's done most of the year. The one loss that those two teams have, Ohio State's loss is just brutal to Purdue. And and I understand the emotions that were behind that night. That was the Tyler uh, uh, Tyler Trent night. Uh, in West Lafayette, that was an emotional scene and a great performance by Purdue. But Ohio State looked flat, and they've looked flat more than once. They should have lost to Maryland. They, we, they shouldn't even be in this conversation. Maryland should have beaten them with that two-point conversion. And had, not, had it not been for, for a ball thrown you know, a few millimeters the, the wrong way, uh, we wouldn't even be having this discussion with Ohio State. I think Oklahoma is in with a win and an Alabama win. That's mostly to get Georgia out of the way. Georgia is still a roadblock to Oklahoma, much like it was a year ago in the Rose Bowl. Georgia's still that roadblock because if Georgia wins, Alabama I still think is good enough to make the playoffs as the four seed, and that would eliminate Oklahoma unless Clemson were to lose, and I just don't see Clemson losing the pit. So Oklahoma I think is in with a win and an Oklahoma loss. So, uh, hypothetically speaking, then, an Alabama-Oklahoma matchup in the college football playoff semifinal, how well do you think overall Bam- that uh, Oklahoma matches up with the Crimson Tide? I think if this were a few years ago, you know, like we like we saw, uh, what was that, a Sugar Bowl game that Alabama ended up losing? I, I feel like if it were that matchup a few years ago, then then I would take Oklahoma. Uh, the one thing about this Alabama team, it's on a different level offensively than than those other Alabama teams of years past, especially when Tua is healthy. So I, I feel like as bad as Oklahoma's defense has been, I think you're looking at another game like like maybe we saw with maybe maybe I, I feel bad putting Oklahoma and Arkansas into the same category, but I, I feel like just the way the pace of the game with Arkansas for Alabama played out, I think that's what we would end up seeing. Oklahoma's offense would be out there for a good amount of time, and and just with the with the number of reps by the sheer volume of possessions, I think they would they would score into the 30s, maybe even the 40s. I think their offense is that good, but they can't stop anybody. And Alabama with the with the offensive efficiency that they've had, I feel like they would score a touchdown every single possession. So I think it'd be a high scoring a higher scoring game that we're used to seeing with uh, with Alabama, but. I feel like Alabama would still be the, the better suited team in that matchup. Now, we'll get to in the second hour of the show today, Adam, as far as what Nick Saban had to say when a question was asked about the future of conference championship games in the playoff era of college football for the FBS. Uh, I asked this of Gary Harris earlier this morning, Adam. Uh, what do you see uh, from your perspective as a broadcaster on the national per- national level, uh, as far as that, look into your crystal ball and tell me what you see of the shelf life of that college uh, conference championship game for college football. Uh, I still, I still think they're 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 going to be in for the long haul, uh, and especially for the life of this current college football television deal. Uh, I don't think anything's changing for the next, you know. 15 years, 16 years, basically, at the very least. Uh, I think it would take uh, people to move to mountains to be able to shift that. Now, now that doesn't mean it's not possible. I'm sure if there's money involved, I'm sure somebody will figure out a way to make it happen. But I think the viability of the conference championship depends on how we how we do the playoff going forward. Because I, I do feel like we're devaluing conference championships a little bit, a little bit, not a ton, but a little bit right now. With you know, like I said, Alabama Georgia might not might just be a moot point because if Georgia wins close, you know Alabama's going to get in anyway. So what what does it matter that they lost their conference title game? They won the playoff last year without having won a conference championship. So uh, I I think the viability of those games is going to depend on what we do with the playoff. If it turns into an eight team playoff that has five conference champions and then two wild cards, then you know what? I'm all for it. I'm all for conference championships sticking around i think you put more value on it i understand that the exclusivity of this is what makes it special but i think uh i i would say that those conference championship games would have added value in an 18 playoff so i I think they still have a lot of value right now if i had my brothers in the 14 playoff i would not have a, a conference title game i would declare the regular season champion as the champion but I think there's still viability for them in a 
in a, in a playoff that's structured a little bit differently than it is now. So before, uh, when we get to you next week, Adam, uh, we'll have – uh, in stone in that magic marker, the four team playoff for this year. For so, give us what you think will be the four teams that will be announced on Sunday. I think uh, I, I expect Alabama to win uh, a closer game than they have this year. So I think Alabama wins and they go undefeated in the regular season. I think they're they're the one seed. I don't see Clemson faltering against Pitt, and Pitt's a quality run team, and I think Clemson can stop the run. And if they do that, everybody's going to say, wow, look at what they did against that great Pittsburgh rushing attack. So I, I keep them at number two. I think Notre Dame with an undefeated season at 12-0 and is locked in at three. And then I, I, I think Oklahoma and Ohio State both win their conference title games. And I think Oklahoma is going to look good doing it. Uh, I, I, think, I, I think I just feel like they've improved a little bit more than Texas has as the year has gone on. And Texas has had some bad stretches offensively, so I think that mitigates some of Oklahoma's defensive woes. They're not playing West Virginia. They're playing Texas. So I think uh, I think Oklahoma wins against Texas, and I think they get the four seed. Uh, that's how I see it playing out. I think it'd, it'd be a lot of fun to see Alabama, Oklahoma, and Notre Dame Clemson. I think those are two matchups that a lot of us would love to see. I know the playoff committee uh, – We'll have a very difficult task in front of them with Ohio State and Oklahoma, assuming both of them win. But that's how I see it playing out. And, and I think as a fan, those are great, great matchups. They have name brand appeal. They have defensive appeal as well with three of those teams and maybe the best offense in the country in Oklahoma. I think that'd be a great playoff. All right, before uh, we let you go, tell us where in our great country you will be for your next play-by-play to assignment. Well, on uh, on. I, I feel like I had one of the one of the great moments in uh, in college hoop history back in April and uh, late March with the women's final four, and uh, Notre Dame and UConn gave us an absolute thriller in overtime uh, back in late March, and uh, it, they'll square off in South Bend, about two hours east of where I'm at right now on uh, on Sunday at four Eastern at ESPN. It'll be one versus two in a final four rematch. It'll be pretty fun to be a part of. There you go. Well, knock it out this weekend, my friend. Appreciate you very much.